Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I have a new best friend today. Her name is Andrea Fraze. She is from Pepperell. Pepperell. Massachusetts and she's come down today to join me and talk about her healing modalities. It's very interesting. She she came highly recommended by a dear friend of mine, Vicki Poppy, whom we all know, and uh, she's adorable and we just are going to have a wonderful time explaining her journey. And so welcome to the show. Glad you made it. Me too. Thank yes. you for thank you for the invitation. Well, you know what's fun about this job? I always have to laugh after 20 years. I never know who I'm going to meet, what they're going to do, and that makes it fresh and it keeps me asking good questions that I didn't ask you yesterday because then I might forget today. So that's my that's my theory. Ah. But it works for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because I had the same experience in, in, in my field. I never know where I'm going to be, who I'm going to meet, what they need to work on, and where we're going to go with that. Yes. And I just stay open and see where we're going to go. Yeah. And like I'm open today, I don't know what questions you're going to ask. We haven't rehearsed anything. We're, I know. We're just doing it in, we're, in the moment. In we're the showing up, as they say. That's I and told God. Spirit. I said, you set it up and I'll show up. All right. So we're here, here I am, showing up. <laughs> <laughs> we're both here. We got this far. That's right. Now, what I want to know, and our friends always love to know where my guest comes from, what their background is, how did they get to this special mission because it didn't happen you weren't your first breath wasn't sacred bridging you had a, a history maybe a spiritual practice maybe not maybe you had some trauma maybe you had some life experience that opened you up to mm. receive what you're receiving so would you mind sharing with us sure we don't have to go to back to first grade but <laughs> oh, oh see no. now that's where i wanted to start <laughs> oh no okay. all right so no um my background i was born and raised on the cape Oh. So this is full circle for me. Oh, this is <laughs> I that funny. It, it was hysterical when I found out where you were because uh. I said, ah. <laughs> I mean, the first thing I did when I, I had a car before I had my license. Oh. And the minute I got my license, the plates went on the car. I went up the Mid-Cape Highway, oh. over the bridge, and around and around the rotary. Because <laughs> I didn't know where to go, but I knew I was going to be off the Cape. I didn't know what the plan was going to be for me, but I knew the plan wasn't for me to grow up and stay on the Cape and follow... Um, I would say the typical life path for yeah. a woman. Okay. Uh, okay. Grow up, get married, have children, and you know maybe you'll have and a shuck job. Shuck oysters. And, yeah, shuck oysters. <laughs> so I'm a I am a I'm a clam digger. I was born in the Cape Cod Hospital. Oh really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. just so funny. So no, you don't meet too many people actually born here. No. And uh, so that's and it was beautiful energy. Me growing up here it was like growing up in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Because you know after Labor Day they kind of pull in the sidewalks. And it was oh, absolute heaven. It was heaven. It was very quiet, um, except at my house because <laughs> we had six kids and then we, oh. we had a three-bedroom house. And it was we all had big personalities and oh, it was gee. very wild. Yeah. And uh, but it was, you know, we we come into this life choosing how we want to move through it. That some is of right. it we remember, and some of it we don't. And I came into this life singing, ah. happy. Always, I used to make up songs about everything. Oh. And, and oh, until nice. I was about six years old, my family had bought a piece of land up, on the, uh, up in North Howitch on Robbins Pond. Okay. And it was about five and a half acres on a lake. Oh. And it was really wonderful. And, but they were clearing the land, pulling out stumps and whatever. And I was sitting on a little boardwalk on a little stool. And, you know, you said to me when I got here today that, that I'm very tall, but actually I'm the shortest one in my family. <laughs> and I didn't really grow till I was almost in high school. So oh, um, I was a, really a small, petite little kid when I was growing up. Anyway, so I'm sitting on this little stool, and my mother's pulling out stumps. And, of course, I'm singing a song about my mother pulling out stumps. And because everything I saw, I didn't talk about it, I would sing about it. Yeah. So, well, you know, we come in knowing who we are. And yeah. then if some, anything happens we go blank and what happened to me is I did have a trauma that day and because I mean I was uh, really little six years old oh. and not too tall a little bit of a kid uh -huh. and my little brother Gordon who has since passed away uh, in my life which was also part of my story and journey yeah. um, was there and it's just the three of us and my mother's working really hard and I don't know where she was in her mind that day but I was in love with my mother Oh. I didn't know where my mother ended and I began. Isn't that interesting? I feel the same way. Yeah, I, I so loved her. And so to, to sing to her, it, it was like, for me, it was honoring. 
in my yeah. soul to do that. That was like very natural for me. Yeah. But that particular day, she was not in the mood, <laughs> for whatever reason, for me to be singing. <laughs> and so she got really upset and she got right in my face and she goes, don't you ever stop singing? Oh no. And I'm like on the stool, I'm like looking up and I'm going, Oh no. And I fell over and a stump went up into my back. A stump? A stump, because we were clearing land. Oh no. And I couldn't get off of it, so she lifted me off and there's blood everywhere. Oh. And I, all I can tell you is that day, I stopped singing, naturally. I would, I would think so. And... What a story. She didn't do it to be mean. She didn't do it for any of that. It, those were circumstances that happened in a moment. Yeah. And our life does change in a flash. Yeah. She and was having that kind of day. She was having that kind of day, and I didn't know about it, and I thought I was giving her this it's great so gift. It's so funny, when you were just about to say you were singing, I was, until your brother told you to stop or to be quiet, I was just thinking of somebody. But what a trauma. It was. Now, how serious was that in your back? Well, I still have the scar from it. <laughs> do, you, do you have a hole in your back? I had one at, a, at the time. I don't remember her taking me to the <laughs> hospital or anything. I remember it happening, and I also remembered that I wouldn't sing anymore. And when oh. I did try to sing, I would, it would be so, my vocal cords, I would be so tight that it yeah. would always sound terrible. And so people always used to pretty much laugh at me when I sang, oh my God, oh, there she goes, oh, that's terrible. You mean after the accident? Afterwards, yeah. And I got very shy. This was affected? Yes. Mm -hmm. I got very, because it was an emotional trauma for yeah. me. Yeah. And, and it, you know, if I come in singing and I can't sing, then I can't connect with my spirit. I hear you. So I lost connection to the thing that makes me me, yeah. which is how I express myself is through song. All these years later, it's part of my healing modality. It's the sacred bridging. Yeah. So, so you got it back. I did get it back. And um, now this is the journey home. This is bridging you. This is I'm taking you from one yeah. from the place of fear. Yeah. And and then yes. And so trauma I'm, and yeah. and trauma and yeah. also you know I got very shy. I got very insecure. I didn't, you know, it was hard for me to raise my hand and speak in school. Oh. Um, I, I lost my confidence a lot. Um, I would be okay in small groups or, or whatever, but I uh, also um, understood a lot of things in my spirit growing up, but yeah. I couldn't articulate it. So a lot of the times what would come up for me is I would have these knowings and I would end up um, either you know, not knowing what to do with the information or how to tell somebody about it, and I would cry a lot. Okay. Or I'd go off by myself. And, um, and my, so my family's always, you know, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong with you? And I was like, I, I could just feel something bigger going on and not being able to explain it. So that's very frustrating. Yeah. You know, we don't have, as children, we don't have the articulation yeah. to express something that we, in, in many cases for me, I didn't even understand. Yeah. So yeah, at that age, it almost sounds to me like there was the death of a mom. There was this, this severing for a moment of something that meant so much to you. But I didn't even I didn't with lose the accident. It. Yeah, but I, di I didn't lose the connection with my mother. That 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 even Did though that happened, I lost the connection with myself. Well, that shift which was mm. with you, not her intent. She didn't intend. Oh my God, anything. no! Oh but my, the love never. was there. But the sh that something happened within you. Some, I disconnected from my spirit, <sighs> and I so then I was trying to be who could I be that didn't sing that could be heard, and so we begin. That's how the I think how the ego begins. That yeah. that other that other part of us, the personality of us, begins yeah. to develop because we start looking for who can I be that they would love? Who could I yeah. be that she'd want to hear? Who could I be that? Um, would be invited in yeah. and so I began to create uh, another uh, a personality and it didn't really fit because it wasn't me yeah uh, but it it went on most of my life yeah I was just gonna say did you try acting did you try various parts well what's so interesting <laughs> is the thing that really helped me out of it is in high school acting class Yes, and they didn't have it but they set out a thing called creative dramatics and there was a teacher of mr. Tischler and he passed out, and was, I think it was a senior in high school or something, he passed out um, little pieces of paper and said, you're going to go up in front of the class and you're going to be this, you're going to mime it. Oh. And I was like, oh no. Oh my God. That must have been scary. It was very scary. <laughs> but I went up there and all of a sudden it was like, it just happened. I was like, this is great. 
And then I got into the senior class play. I went into the Miss Howitch contest. Oh. I won the uh, talent award. <laughs> I was Joan of Arc. And I was like, all this stuff was happening to me. I go, are you kidding me? There were lots of you. And so then I, yeah. there, are, there are a lot of me. And there is a lot of me. So <laughs> even though I'm in this smaller body. I feel your like, energy. Yeah. It was, it's so wonderful. they. Um, isn't that fun? And I wanted to go to Emerson College, and my dad goes, oh, what do you want to do that for? Or, you know, you're going to starve. And I go, well, thanks for all the confidence, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm pretty good. That, that might be wonderful for me. So that didn't... That so you didn't go to acting school? I ended up majoring in psychology. Ah, right. Wanting to understand mm -hmm. my life, what was happening. People were fa fascinating to me. And the other part, that when I was a little girl, I used to love to get um, cream and massage my mother's legs. My mother always had, you know, very, uh, she had a lot of issues with her legs and circulation and things like that. Oh. So when I was a little kid, I said, come on, Ma, let me, let me do your legs. So I was always touching, massaging, and there was something in me that understood that there was that, that healer in me that sang, that touched people, knew intuitively that if I, if I touched her and was, and was gentle, that she would feel better. Yeah. So I always had that in me, and um, people, I found out years later when I traveled on the road in this other business that I was in for a number of years, um, oh, if anybody had a bad back or something, they would say, they'd send them down to my room. I didn't know they were doing it till years later. Isn't that fun? That did you graduate you in the psychological realm? I did. I got a degree in psychology. I also got a minor in, in um in education, okay. so I'm a certified teacher also. Are you? Yeah, so I wanted to teach, um, I wanted to teach a subject, but I wanted to teach it through drama. Ah. And I didn't, nice. wanna, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I never wanted to do anything in the typical way. So in my student teaching, I did do creative, I, I, I think I taught social studies with, through creative dramatics. Okay. So I'd give the children roles to play, and I figured they would remember history better that I way. I think so. Yeah, and then if somebody was really shy, I'd give them the leadership role. Or if somebody was a troublemaker, I would give I would give them you know the the role of president or something like that, and they would have to you know then to get so frustrated because people aren't listening to them. And I said, and now you know, <laughs> now you know, <laughs> and so that helped in their behavior. So there was a behavioral thing going on. There's the drama piece going oh. on, and there was and there was the creative piece going on for me. Yeah. And in there, there was healing going on. Yeah. So. And yeah. you must have felt wonderful. I mean, you must have been sensing w your journey and how you were opening up and expanding and using all these venues. Gee, you know, I'll tell you something. I don't think I really was connected to that. You weren't. No. But did you learn from that, from your giving, that you felt... I always felt good to give. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, it always felt good to give. That's where I was going, that you just felt like, ah, oh, satisfied. That, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. But I ended up not going into teaching, even though I was offered a job. Mm -hmm. um, I think... We had a big family, and both of my parents worked, and my mom worked at night, and so I ended up doing a lot of uh, babysitting yeah. and taking care of my three younger brothers, which oh. I adore. I have yeah. identical twin brothers. You do? Yeah, I have four brothers and a sister. Oh, for some reason, brothers kept coming to me about you. Yeah. For some reason. Where do you fit in the lineup? I'm in, I'm third. You're third in I'm the lineup? I'm third. Okay. So there were, there were five births, five pregnancies, six oh, children. Six children. The last two were twin, identical twin boys. Oh, mom. Yeah, she was, she did a lot, she so, managed a lot. So maybe you, you didn't, did you sense the healing power then? Or in, in hindsight, did you realize? I'm seeing it now. Uh, I'm seeing the perfect plan for my life because after college, I didn't, I didn't take the teaching job. I, I wanted to, I rebuilt the engine of my Volkswagen and, uh, you and I got it? a tent and I got a, and I got a stove and I, I always wanted to travel. And uh, th that was the thing about my mom too. She didn't bring me up the typical way a mother at that time would have brought up a, a, a girl. Um, and, I, and I've never had this conversation with my sister, so I don't know if she said the same things to her, but what, what she had told me is to make sure you get an education, mm -hmm. travel. And she said, just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you have to get married, that you have to have children. She said, if you do Good those things, she says, if you do those things, she says, make sure that you really want to do them. She says, because they require great uh, commitment yeah. and love to do those things. And she says, and children are forever. 
Yeah. So you really want to be sure that that's what you I want to do. I think she was ahead of her time. She definitely was. Yeah. She definitely was. And, and, on, and maybe she saw something in me that she didn't understand, but she was guiding me from that place. And she also said, always live alone and get a job and know how to pay your bills. So should anything wow. happen, if you do get married or something, maybe he passes away or something like that, and you end up on your own, that you know how to take care of yourself wow. and that you never feel like... You, you, somebody, you, that you can always take care of yourself. Yeah. And you know how much you learn living alone. You know how much you learn. That's you exactly a, what I did. You become an advocate for yourself. You, you take good care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You research your things that are good for you. You don't take anyone's you know, word for it. You find out for yourself. And it makes you strong. It's very empowering. Well, I, I, I believe that I've lived, if I figured it out, I, I probably lived at least half, if not more, of my life alone. Wow. I'm glad you're saying this because I want my friends to hear this that are watching this program really? because there's a wonderful life living alone. Oh my God, it's, it's very a, exciting. It's very full. I, I mean, people are always trying to put me with somebody. <laughs> and it's not like, and I was married once. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I actually enjoyed being married. But there, again, it, it has to be the right match. And yeah. down the road uh, on this journey, I was trying to find, you know, I wasn't trying to find my spiritual self. I think that we, we all come in doing that. Yeah. But I think that my sense is that we lose the consciousness of that and we end up getting so engrossed in the world that we, we, get, we get lured in and kind of sucked into, you know, careers and money and things and people and degrees. And yeah. our, our identification isn't about spirit. Our identification is about this physical form. Yeah. And, and are we successful yeah. in the eyes of the world? Yeah. And so my focus was really on that in school to get, yeah. you know, I graduated, you know, with Dean's List and did really well there and, and then headed off across country and did 9,000 miles in six weeks and I loved it out west. And oh, did you? Oh my God, yeah, it was wonderful. And at the time I had fallen in love my last two years of school and we were trying to decide where we were going to live. We were thinking about the possibility of getting married down the road. Yeah. And I said, well, you've just got your graduate degree and I've just had my bachelor's at this point. I says, why don't you apply for a job any place in the world and wherever you get a job? I'm there. We'll go. <laughs> what are you going to do? I said, the I'm not worried about me. I said, I'll be fine. Woman. Yeah, I'll be fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if they only know. <laughs> Wait till he gets you there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, he, the best offer he got was New York City. So uh, hey, we lived in New Jersey for a short time until uh, I was going bonkers trying to decide what to do with myself because... Um, I didn't like being at home and you know doing laundry and cooking and whatever. I mean, full time. What do you? I was at the time I was saying, okay, Ma, now I know why you were teaching me all that. Um, I needed to be stimulated. I need to be in the world. I need to be with people. Yeah. And I wanted to be with adults. I think because as I as I said, I, I grew up you know taking care of a lot of my family, doing a lot of the house cleaning and laundries, and I had a lot of responsibility as a, as a young child. So I feel like there was a big piece of me that didn't get to play that much. Yeah. So, um, and, I, and I am a very responsible person. If somebody gives me something to do, I, I take it very seriously. Yeah, I can and, hear and that. And do it with yeah. great integrity. You do things well and you follow through. And Absolutely. Why else do it? Right. right. That's a waste of energy if you're not going to yeah. you know, move all the way through that. Yeah. So, uh, so I here you are married, doing dishes and laundry. No, I'm not. No, I'm not married yet. Oh, you're not married yet? No, no, oh. no. I was just living with him. Oh, so you, uh, it's you good tried it My father's out. already passed away. He'd be like, oh, my God, don't say that. <laughs> You, you tried it. You auditioned. Well, I guess I did. I guess I did. And so I was looking for something to do, and uh, he said, well, why don't you try something in retail? And I was like, oh, geez, you know, maybe he said, just get just something part-time if you want. And um, so I went, I got the New York Times. Yeah. I opened up the New York Times. I closed my eyes. I went like this. Lord and Taylor. I answered an ad. No, it was for an... Uh, just uh, guessing. It was a... <laughs> it was a... Um, <laughs> Machine shop. <laughs> no, it was, it, was for, it was for a headhunter's place for retail, oh. and it was in New York City. And as oh. I said, we lived in New Jersey at the time, commuting. He was commuting in. Yep. And um, at any rate, what happened was um, I went for the job, and I called him up, and they liked what they heard on the phone. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, can you come in? And I said, well, how do you get there? <laughs> he goes, what do you mean, how do you get there? You just get on. The, and I said, well, I've never been to New York City. I don't know how to get there. I'm oh. living in New Jersey. I came from the Cape and blah, blah, blah. Oh, and he cute. goes, so he gave me directions on how to get a bus, how to get to Port Authority, and then yeah. and how to get to where he is. So 
I got on the bus. There's a journey. Yes, there's another journey. You're traveling. I had to go through a tunnel, not a bridge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> through the Lincoln <laughs> Tunnel. And uh, went to Port Authority. I got there. The interview went well. And at the end of it, he was, he was so tickled with the accent. And he said, well, you know, he says, there's something about you. I don't know what it is. He says, but I don't think I have anything here. He said that, you know, is, would, would be, suit you. And I said, oh, well, okay. You know, I gave it a shot. And he said, and... Um, and I'd filled out the forms and everything, and, and I thanked him very much, and I was leaving, and then he, and as I was leaving, he goes, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, and I said, what? And he goes, you know what? He says, there's a man who has a commission on a place. He says, I, I don't think he's filled that space yet. He said, it might be perfect for you. So he calls the man in, and he's reading this, and he's looking at it, and this is back in 1975, and they're looking at, you know, what a teacher makes in 1970, and this, I can't even believe I'm going to say it, but it was true back then. $8,000 was <gasps> what you made a year as a teacher. Oh, no. Most people can't even do that in a month, right? Right. Oh, but my But that's God. how things have changed. Yes. All right? Yes. And uh, so anyway, so he's looking, he goes, oh, well, you only want to make 8000 He said, this job starts at fifteen, maybe twenty. And I'm like going, hey, I'll do that one. Are you kidding me? Oh, my Hey, God. I could do that. You know, and he oh, said, cute. he goes, well, just calm down. The next day, they set up an interview with me for the vice president of a French company called Charles Jordan, which was designer, footwear, and accessories. And for a management trainee job. And I went in, I interviewed, and everything that he asked me, I answered, but every time I said something to him, he would kind of put it down a little bit. And, well, you don't really have this, and you don't really have that. And so I said, excuse mm -hmm. me, I said, Monsieur Bastiani, I said, there's a, if you would be so kind, I said, there's a camel coat behind you. And he looked up, he goes, well, that's your coat. And I said, exactly, I'm leaving. You didn't? I did. How cute. He goes, Would you, the interview's not over. I said, the interview's over. Are you kidding me? I said, you <laughs> asked me a question, you keep telling me I can't do the job, so I don't need to keep sitting here listening to why I can't do it. Yeah. I said, do you want somebody to just stand up, stand up there and be a pretty little mannequin or something? I said, that's not me. Yeah. I said, they sent me here because they said they thought I could do the job. You don't think I can. I, I said, what? I said, I helped raise three brothers. I said, I put myself through college. I said, I, got, I was a dean's list student there. I've been across country. I found my way into New York City. I'm sitting here in this interview. I said, I, I've worked all my I life since I'm alone. What, what can you, what's this job? This job is so hard that I can't, what's, what is it about this job that's so hard that I can't learn it? Do you think I'm stupid? And he's like, well, he goes, well, um, and I said, so I don't mean to be rude, but I feel like you're being rude, so I'm, Good I'm going to go. You. I'm going to go. So you got the job. He called me up. Uh, the um, recruiter called me that night. I was literally putting the keys in the door, and I could hear the phone ringing on the other side of the oh door. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. And I pick up the phone, and I said, hello. And he goes, and it was the recruiter. And he goes, oh, my God. He goes, what did you say to them? And I go, I said, I can't believe you sent me there. I said, that was not. I said, you said, oh, I'm going to be perfect for them. I said, they couldn't stand. I said, they told me I couldn't do that. He goes, whoa, 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 slow down. He goes, they loved you. They want you to start tomorrow. I said, well, I'm not starting tomorrow. I told you I want to start in January. This was like in December because my folks had just separated. Yeah. I had a brother who had gone in the service, and he was going to come home Oh. for the first time, and we were all going to be together for the oh. first time in a long time, and I didn't want to miss Christmas. Oh. So at any rate, he, um, they went back and forth about whether or not I would do this job, and they wanted me to start right away, and I kept saying no. So long story short, what they ended up doing is they said, if, how are you going to get home? I said, I'm, I'm driving. And I said, my brother's going to meet me. I'm going to take him home with me. Yeah. And they said, well, won't you be tired if you start the next day? I said, I'm not starting the day after <laughs> Christmas. I'm not starting. You're not hearing me. A little control there? Yeah. So he said, um, so he goes back to the company. So they bought me an airplane ticket, and they flew me down and back if I would start right away. I'll be done. So, th I mean, here it is. So, this yeah. is how it started. And yeah. I fell in love with the business yeah. because it was creative, yeah. it was new, it was exciting, and, and I really learned people. Yeah. We have five minutes, believe it or not. I warned you, these go fast. Yes. So, where are we? In our last five minutes on this journey, how long were you in this job? Six and a half years. Okay. And then I was, did another job for another woman, and I s developed retail stores, and I was in the fashion. I did all different parts of it. I worked with designers and set up retail divisions of companies and That's things like, like that. And then I moved back to Massachusetts yes. and started a wholesale clothing company myself. <sighs> and then in 1995, I'm driving along one day out there by myself, and I heard, I wonder where my Bible is. You heard that. Oh. I heard the voice. All right. And I'm thinking, I wonder where my Bible is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm not wondering where my Bible is. Who's, who's wondering? <laughs> That's not me. Oh. And it lasted, it kept coming in and out for about six months, and then it stopped. And that was in 95. In 96, um, my father was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, I'm sorry. Six months later, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, and six so months after that, my younger brother Gordon was diagnosed with cancer. Oh. So we had all three with cancer. Oh. This is the beginning of my spiritual journey had started just prior to that. Yeah. So this catapulted me. If I was kind of walking along, this was like this sprinting. Was, yeah. This wasn't just doing the high jump. This was doing a pole vault. Yeah. Uh, trying to understand how, what is this, some kind of a cosmic joke? How yeah. could this be happening? Yeah. So I started to really see life and death. So all of the things that I had been involved with before in New York City and fashion and the outside yeah. of life, started to be something that I needed to look at inside. Yeah, traveling inside. Traveling inside. Yeah. And uh, so that little piece, uh, I don't know if we'll save that for another day to tell yeah. you. Yeah. Or, well, but that was, that was a voice. And, and it was interesting that it would come at that time because it did take me on a path and that Bible did show up in my life. Yeah. I don't think I can tell you the story in, yeah. well, then in we'll, the short piece of okay, time we have, we'll, but I would definitely love to tell the story. Next week when we have you back, we will start the show with that story. We It'll have two minutes. So, yeah, you are a healer. You've had this journey where you enjoyed uh, a creative, artistic, yes. sort of glitzy world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And isn't that wonderful? No mm -hmm. accident. All of them are perfect, you know, on your period. You had pink period yeah. and then your blue period, and they all add up somehow or other. To well, what's interesting is I thought I was really making people feel better by helping them feel better about who they were. Yeah. And I was doing it from the outside. Yeah. And what I realized in life is that this really is so temporary. Yeah. And that the healing and the feeling good doesn't last that long if mm. the inside isn't mm. feeling good. The Sagittarian, because I do my share of astrology, but it's so interesting because Sagis love to travel, but it's always they travel within as soon as they reach a certain stage, then the journey is within and they never stop traveling. They just no, go no, in the no. other direction. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful story. Yeah. But it's brought me my brother's my brother's passing. He, oh. he passed first. He did. That yes. must have been hard for you. Within folks. eight months of his diagnosis, and wow, that was amazing. It was that was really the yeah. the true beginning. In our last minute, then I can sum this up with mm -hmm. that's a lot of loss. Yes, and your parents that must have been so hard on them because they weren't well either, and no. to lose a son is. Mm -hmm. It must have been brutal, but yes. Thank you for that openness and that sharing of yeah, all you're of that. This is life. Yes. It's life. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. yeah. We'll talk to you next week. I am so looking forward to it. Uh, me too. Thank you. Thank you, my friends, for joining us on Awaken the Dream. We will talk to Andrea next week.